don't we start talking about yourself a little bit? And I know you have, a, I don't know if you still have a two studios running. That's correct. Um, I have my studios north where I am right now uh, due to COVID. <laughs> okay. We had to cancel all the workshops this year at my studio. Okay, south, which is which located is in uh, when uh, the so your north studio is in uh, what state? It's in Ashfield, Massachusetts. Okay. It's a rural Massachusetts, Western Mass. And um, beautiful location. I usually run a few plein air studio painting workshops, drawing workshops from here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually doing some Zoom workshops from here now mm -hmm. um, as we had to cancel uh, the workshops in Mexico for this year. Yeah, uh, my workshops, uh, my studio south is in a little fishing village, uh, 10 miles south of Puerto Vallarta. Mm -hmm. uh, we call that's uh, Casa de los Artistas. We've been running workshops there. This would, would have been our 16th year. Wow. Uh, and uh, in fact, I have a video that I've produced uh, to introduce people to my studio south. Would you like to oh, see it wow. now or? Yeah, you can. I mean, you know, we, as long as we have some time, you can show this too. So uh, the studio in Mexico, um, so that's where you do most uh, summer workshops? No, those are actually conducted in the winter time. Oh, so, so the winter usually... workshops are done in Mexico. Yeah, from December through uh, beginning of April, usually. Oh, um, because uh, it's a warmer there. Yeah, it's beautiful weather, like a steady 82 degrees, uh, sunny. Oh, okay. Um, and I teach there along with um, numerous famous artist colleagues. Oh. Um, some of the, the, the biggest teachers and painters in the United States uh, join me there for one week uh, workshops. Yeah, and, I've uh, seen them uh, on your website. I've I've saw a lot of famous names there too, including yours. So yeah. uh, okay, so since you are in uh, No Studio, uh, so that's where you conduct uh, lots of uh, summer workshops. I mean, you used to conduct lots of uh, uh, workshops there uh, pre-COVID era, right? Yeah, in the summertime, I'll conduct, um, and in fact, this summer, hopefully some plein air painting workshops, uh, socially distanced. Yeah, uh, you probably know. <laughs> it's possible this summer since a lot of people started getting vaccination and stuff. Yeah. And I'm doing oh, uh, some Zoom workshops from here. Right. Uh, drawing, painting workshops as well. I see. Okay, uh, so um, so when, when you start, uh, I mean, you probably painted a long time, I mean, all your life, right? This is true. I yeah, started and my formal uh, painting in the studio of my mentor, Alton S. Toby, when I was about 11 years old. Oh, really? And, wow. And I worked with Toby uh, when I was about 17. I went to the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and Tufts University, where I um, received a BFA and a diploma in painting. Uh -huh. And then uh, taught for a while, did different things to make a living as an artist. Um, and then I went back to school um, and got a master's degree in painting and art history from the City College of New York. And that was around 1986. Oh, I see. Uh, and, um, you know, I've been a full time exhibiting professional artist for over 40 years um, and teaching most of that time as well. Mm -hmm. um, in various settings from, you know, colleges to workshops to, um, you know, all, all different kinds of settings. Right. Uh, and, um, you know, I, you know, art as education has been an important piece of my life as an artist of because course. I'm so much uh, excited when I see the light bulb go on in right. other people yeah. when they, they get that, uh, uh, idea that creativity is actually our, you know, birthright as human beings. As right. as, you know, and everyone has it to different degrees. And so many people, it just sits there unawakened. But right. my philosophy of teaching and my philosophy of painting is that we're all part of creation. Right. And therefore, we have creative energy. And, yeah. um, you know, my job as a as an artist and as an art instructor is to awaken that in other people and to give them facility. And that's the reason that I started the Casa de los Artistas in Mexico uh -huh. uh, 17, 18 years ago is when we built right. it. And um, 
bringing artists that share that philosophy that when you see a, a spark of creativity, you fan it. Yeah, you know, and right. then hopefully it'll become a flame. And we try to, you know, bring that inspiration to people and, and teach in a way that uh, is supportive. Yeah. Uh, and brings not just not just technical information. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, anybody can learn a craft if they have patience, practice and persistence. Right. But art goes beyond craft. Art uh, has to do with the personal spirit of creativity within the individual. That's so nurturing right. that takes a special kind of teacher. Right. And that is igniting passion. I always talk about the five Ps, patience, practice, persistence. You can master any craft. And this is what I taught my children. But to raise it to an art, you need, um, you need passion and permission. You have to give your permission, yourself that permission to engage and also to fall down and get back up, you know, because right. The way that, you know, that patience and practice is by experimenting, by, you know, going out uh, into new territory. Really. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's how you grow as an artist. Right. You know, it was a five exploring. piece. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad uh, you mentioned that. And I'm also very respectful of you doing all this, not just uh, your own art, but like spreading this to communities that's great i mean you know it's uh, really good yeah actually before i uh opened the casa like back in 2005 i was inspired to bring art into inner city schools in springfield massachusetts a city oh, really? Really. so oh. i created what was called the art for everyone program and for three years we conducted uh i conducted programs and i hooked up with a friend of mine who was a ahead of the uh, arts and therapies program at Springfield College. Mm -hmm. And um, we received three grants for the Massachusetts Cultural Council right. uh, to run these programs in uh, schools that never had art in them before. Wow. And so it was a, it was a great endeavor. So I, I still like to do that, you know, it's yeah. bringing art where it needs to be done. Sure. Uh, yeah, I see uh, lots of nice paintings behind you. And uh, uh, do, you have, do you have any um, any piece that you can share uh, this time? Yeah, um, certainly. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. These are things I've been, as I mentioned, conducting some uh, workshops, both myself and with some of the artists that teach at the Casa. Um, and these are some of the pieces that were done over the last uh, several weeks. Yeah. Um, this is an area. Let me pull this one up and see if you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So good. This is, wow. This is nice. An oil painting. Uh -huh. uh, it's still in process, uh, but this is an area near the Casa in Mexico. Um, and uh, let's see. This is one that was done um, right near. Here, just up the block. This was a plain air painting. Oh, wow. Um, it has this no is, color? This is a black and this, white kind? Yeah, well, it's a, uh, like a sepia color, but this was using a technique that I teach that's actually a very ancient oil painting technique called imprimatura, where uh -huh. you coat the, the canvas with a color. Literally, imprimatura means the first color. So you uh, cover the canvas, and then you remove the lights, and then add some darks to uh, build up the darks. And typically this was done in the Renaissance, um, but many artists use it in different ways since then. Uh, it was used as an underpainting, but sometimes oh. the paintings come out so nicely, I just leave them in the monochromatic. Oh, like I see. One, so it's a finish. Like it. You're not going to yeah, go I, back. I'm and... not going to go back on that. Some, right. are, you know, some are done just like that. The beauty of that technique is that you can very quickly uh, nail the composition and the value structure, which is right. what everything re, you know, really sits on when yeah. you're painting. You I know, see. there are there are probably five main ingredients, maybe six, in a successful painting. The mm -hmm. first one I always talk about is intention. What is your artistic intention? Because once uh, you decide on your intention, what you're trying to say everything else falls in line with that intention. If it doesn't, that's when we say the painting isn't working. It's not right. following your intention. Um, and so your intention will determine what medium you choose. And so a lot of times students say, oh, Bob, what's your favorite painting medium? And I'll say paint. 
<laughs> you know, it's not a matter of oil or watercolor or acrylic because I've been using them all my life. Uh, when you understand the properties of each, each one is unique and is specific for a, a feel. So when you have a specific intention, then you can decide on the media, the composition, uh, right. then uh, the value structure will fall into that. And so many different things uh, that follow your intention. So right. your intention is everything. When did you take picture of this? Uh, this past last year. Last year? Yeah. Last year uh, before COVID? You know, actually, this part of the video I had someone send to me. Oh, really? Yeah, from, from Boca. Oh, okay. But all the other photos were from the last couple of years. Oh, I see. And my son composed and performed the music that you're hearing. Oh, I see. Nice. I like a background music too. Yeah, that, that's my son who performs that. Oh, really? He wrote it and performed it. Oh, wow. What kind of instrument is this? Many is different ones. Yeah. Many different drums. Like yeah. That. I hear the drum sound too. Yeah, he's a drummer primarily, but he's also playing guitar, piano. Oh. All different things. Wow, that's nice. So usually you spend about half of the time there? Yeah, about four or five months every year. So when you're not there, then are there some people uh, maintaining the uh, area or? Yes, yeah, we have people that are working there maintaining it. In the summertime, it's very hot and humid, so oh, it's not great for workshops. Okay. So these are all the different artists that teach at the Casa. Right. So you're looking at their paintings from uh, the, the week that they spent there. And we take uh, different excursions to the areas around it. And this is a place called Chico's Paradise, about a 15-minute drive from the Boca. Uh, we go there to paint in plain air, uh, to see the waterfalls. Oh wow, that's uh, like right on the cliff. Yeah. This is the studio at the Casa. And it is literally right on the beach. That's the front yard. Yeah. So people can enjoy painting, then later they can go to the beach and enjoy swimming. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you're seeing uh, my palette, basically. And these right. are some of the things that we'll be doing in my drawing class. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the uh, an example of some of what the form drawing is that I mentioned. How to turn form in space with uh, light and shadow with tone using tone paper, charcoal, and chalk. Wow, it uh, looks so three-dimensional. That's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. And so we'll be going into that, but we'll also talk about um, the abstract qualities of composition, of right. values, uh, both line, edges, um, push and pull uh, to that go into making a painting. And of course, uh, we'll be also be doing some value studies for landscapes uh, like these, both like that. Was it uh, done on watercolor? Uh, this one is a watercolor. Uh -huh. This one is done in charcoal. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, and then we'll be doing some uh, figure uh, exercises so that people like... Uh, I could do a very quick demo, if you like. Right. Take two seconds to show you uh, sure. just... Uh, very quickly, um, you know, people are often intimidated by putting the figure into the landscape. Um, this is one of my favorite tools when I go out to, if I don't want to carry all my paints with me, mm -hmm. I simply bring a 
what's called a graphite wash pencil. Mm -hmm. And there are many different brands. Um, but uh, this one is uh, general. So I also use Derwent and many different ones. But, you know, when we talk about drawing, we want to find a shorthand. We don't, you know, when you're especially painting outdoors, you have to work very quickly. You don't need a lot of information. So, you know, we can simplify into uh this wow. is you know you see i i think you can see that I, I see two people already right and that took 10 seconds not even yeah and then i always i'll carry this uh, what's called a water brush it holds water and my sketchbook and then i can create an ink painting from that oh wow it works like a magic oh actually they're, they're, they're dancing uh salsa yeah, it could be, right? <laughs> yeah, it looks like they're dancing salsa or something. Wow, that's amazing. And so we'll look at how to create that sense of gesture I and see movement. the movement there. Right. Um, wow. We can, uh, you know, just to, the idea of playing with that. Or sometimes, you know, a very quick exercise that I'll have people do is simply take some some colors and make some dots on the paper. I don't know if you can see that there. Oh yeah. And then you it. can you can create a whole crowd of people with that. Oh my, you already drew a whole bunch of people there so fast. Yeah, so the idea is, you know, to simplify because you know, we'll also, you know, as I mentioned, I'll show people how they can do that. If that's your intention, if you want to be able to draw and paint photographically, that's your intention. It takes a certain uh, amount of craft to do that. If you want to paint and draw expressionistically and abstractly, that's a whole different set. Right. You see, you have to learn a different thing. And if you want to simplify for gesture, that's a whole different set. So this drawing right. class is going to cover a whole range of those things so wow. that uh, they'll be equipped to, to really practice whatever it is that they decide is their intention. Right. And that's the most How important exciting. thing. Yeah. You know, I, I always say that if somebody comes to me and asks me, Bob, would you give me a critique on my painting? My first question is always, well, tell me what your intention is. Because mm -hmm. if I don't know your intention, I'm just giving you my opinion, what I like. Right. I'm not right. really. Those are my preferences. But if I know your intention, you say, oh, I want it to be photographic. Well, that takes a certain skill. I could say, well, your proportion is off here. You know, the, this needs to be tightened up. But if you say, no, I really want to make this expressionistic. I want to feel the mood of the energy. I would say, well, maybe you want to distort the proportion of this. You don't right. want it to be so accurate. So mm -hmm. intention is everything, like I said earlier. Yeah, I see. Wow. Yeah. You just right, showed me so much in so little time. Well, thank you. I mean, I've been doing this for, yeah. you know, going on 50 years. So. <laughs>directoryforart.com that's the website for international directory of art workshops and showcase directoryforart.com then here is uh, just posted 10 click on it there you see capturing essence of Mexico in watercolor with Keiko Tanabe. Okay, so watercolor workshop hosted by Robert Mesla Studios. And then here's uh, another workshop Enhance your painting, learning to see. you like crazy. Okay, it's starting in April. 
In this two-day workshop, Masala will lead you with the three cameras through a large gamut of approaches to drawing, extracting lessons from his over 50 years of experience making art. Okay, here is the page explaining in detail. April 8 and 9, 2021, this is an online Zoom workshop with a three camera conducted from Robert Masla Studios North in Asheville, Massachusetts. And you can click the link here for more info. It'll get you to Robert Masler's website. And here it is. Okay, so it's starting soon, so hurry up and sign up for the workshop. Okay, thank you for watching again, and I'll see you soon.